Hello and welcome to another edition of Mental Health Mondays with Dr. David Morgan, uh, brought to you by Onward Productions. I'm grateful for Onward for providing this platform and grateful to all, views, all those of you who uh, tune in and who have questions uh, for me. I really appreciate that. It's a great opportunity for me to, to help others. Uh, regarding your questions, uh, let's get some more. I would like to get your questions related to mental health or the gospel of Jesus Christ or both. Um, I am a licensed psychologist and I am a lifelong member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I love understanding how the gospel and mental health work together to help us, um, uh, I should say the God, principles of the gospel and principles of mental health work together to help us be happier. So, so write in, here's where you can write to uh, this email at onward.mental.health.mondays at gmail.com. All right, let's get to this week's question. This is from a viewer who is wondering how to have appropriate boundaries with individuals who can be particularly demanding. And what she says is that she has a, a close associate who can be uh, pretty emotionally manipulative at times. And she wants to know how to set good limits. And so uh, one of the things she asks is, sometimes I feel guilty that I'm not being compassionate or understanding enough and wonder how I can become more Christ-like and not feel guilty about setting boundaries. Let's just make sure one thing is clear from the beginning. There is nothing unchristlike about setting boundaries. Um, in fact, when you think about it, uh, commandments are kind of the original boundaries that were set, and we got plenty of them. And Heavenly Father has given them to us as a gift. So that idea of setting limits around things is, uh, is a heavenly um, characteristic. So there's definitely nothing unchristlike about setting boundaries. In fact, setting boundaries, setting boundaries, uh, appropriate boundaries is quite Christ-like. Um, what happens then is then people say, well, okay, so maybe it is uh, Christ-like to set a boundary, but I don't feel kind when I set a boundary. I feel like I'm being mean or unkind when I do that. And so let's just make sure that's clear as well. Um, you can set a boundary either uh, with kindness or with unkindness, or you could not set a boundary with kindness or unkindness. I don't necessarily think those two things are related. Um, it, obviously, you can set boundaries with kindness because Heavenly Father and the Savior do it all the time. Um, they're the ultimate examples of kindness. And so um, it is not inherently unkind to set a boundary. You can set a boundary in an unkind way, but you can also set it in a way that shows kindness. So just bear those principles in mind as we talk today. I don't want people having the wrong idea about setting boundaries that it's somehow unchristlike or unkind. It just depends on how you do it. Um, so three principles uh, that I'd like to talk about. Uh, number one is to remember to keep your tank full. I'm talking about your emotional energy. We all have a, a finite amount of emotional energy on any given day. And once you run out, you're out until you fill up again. What happens when we work with people who can be really emotionally demanding is that we um, we give and give and give and they take and take and take and then pretty soon we're empty and they're empty as well and now we can't be helpful at all and and so it's just kind of a bad place to be. I remember many years ago when I was first starting my careers. This is over 20 years ago. I worked at an inpatient psychiatric hospital and uh, there was a woman who uh, came to be there who was admitted. And average length of stay at the hospital was usually about seven to 10 days. She was there for four months uh, due to a number of different circumstances, which was very um, challenging for us. It wasn't what we were used to. And I was assigned to work with her on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, all the days that I were there, that I was there. And so, um, and she was, she pushed my buttons every single day. And I think she knew what she was doing. Um, and, and I just tried to be as patient as I could and as patient as I could, but every day my emotional tank was just getting lower and lower and lower until finally about two months in, I, I reached my breaking point and I think I had some words with her. I don't think it was, um, I wasn't mean or hostile, but I, but it was unprofessional and, and she broke down and said, you don't love me. You don't care for me. And so we had, we reconciled and, um, and I made a commitment to try to, be more professional after that, which I did. But the point was I had reached the only, the reason I got to my breaking point was because I wasn't refilling my tank. I was letting my emotional energy just get drained and drained and drained. So you have to make sure that you have reserves for yourself when you're working with other people. 
Only give so much as you can to still have enough for yourself to, to continue to be helpful. If you're not helpful, then what's the point, right? If you've run out. Um, so that's the first principle. Keep that tank uh, full or at least some reserves in there. Uh, second is that um, excessive tolerance of negative behavior is not helpful. Um, it doesn't make sense or it's, and it's not beneficial to others if we soften every blow or if we get in the way of every consequence. Uh, if you think about in the Garden of Eden with uh, Adam and Eve, and there was the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which had significant consequences if one partook of it, but Heavenly Father didn't put a big chain link fence around it or a, or a brick wall or, or something like that. He said, hey, if you partake of this, there's going to be consequences. And when they partook of it, there were consequences. He didn't say, oh, I was just kidding. Um, there, there's no consequences after all. Now, he mitigated those consequences by providing a savior for them, but they still had to deal with the effects of the fall. And so when we are working with other people, if we um, absorb every consequence that they might have and just pretend like it didn't happen, then I don't think they have a chance to learn anything. Or on, I guess on the contrary, what they learn is I can do anything I want and there's no consequence. And that's not true because there are always consequences to things that we do. So, um, so removing any consequence is not helpful to those people. Softening the blow can be helpful at times. We'll talk about that a little bit in principle number three. Um, but getting in the way of all consequences is not helpful. So, um, so that second point is that don't excessively tolerate that negative behavior. Let there be some consequence to that so people can learn. The third one, and, and I would argue the most important, is to follow the spirit. Uh, human relationships are so complicated and anyone who's had one knows what I'm talking about. And it is a moving target all day long. You can't um, say, okay, I finally figured out how to work with this person and then employ that strategy and it works for the next 20 years. It just doesn't work that way because some days it works and other days it doesn't. And, um, and that's just kind of the way that, uh, that it is. Some days we need to take a more strict approach. Um, and other days we need to take a more tolerant approach. Um, it just varies from day to day. And so I think that's why it's so critical to, uh, to follow the Holy Ghost and to be in tune to receive that revelation. He will instruct you on a day-to-day -day basis of how to help people. And, uh, and the thing about the Holy Ghost is that when he does instruct you, you need to be ready to listen and you need to be ready to act. I think it was, um, President David O. McKay, who said that, um, he says, if you ask the Lord what to do, and he tells you, he says, you need to do it, or you better not ask him again. And of course, we can ask him again. But I think what President McKay was trying to say was that um, if you're going to say, Heavenly Father, please bless me that I'll know what to do today and give me the courage to do it. And then he blesses you with that knowledge, and he blesses you with the courage, and you still don't do it, then that's on us. So we need to be prepared to act on what the spirit, um, on what the spirit instructs us to do. And so, when you're working with these people, there's going to be different things uh, and different ways to work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. So, in as much as you are in tune with the spirit, that's going to be helpful. Okay. So, summarizing the three points: number one, don't let your emotional tank run on empty. Make sure that you've got something in that tank for you every single day. You can give away a fair amount. And, and we're supposed to help others, but make sure there's some for you left. Number two, recognizing that um, excessive tolerance of negative behavior is not helpful. And quite frankly, it actually uh, retards the growth of other people because they learn incorrect principles. They think I can do whatever I want and there's no consequence. And that is just not true. One of the best ways we learn is to experience the negative consequences of our behaviors. And then we learn, oh, I don't want to do that. I won't do that again. And then number three, use the spirit to help you. Uh, know what interventions are going to be best at any given time. Um, the Holy Ghost is highly invested in you having happy and healthy relationships, and he will teach you, but you have to be willing to listen, you have to be willing to learn, and you have to be willing to act. So thanks again to uh, all that watched today. If you have, Like I said, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Uh, you can go to my website at uh, ldspsychologist.com, or you can find me on Instagram at ldspsychologist. I appreciate um, your support. Remember that you can change, but that change requires action. 
and to always keep moving forward. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.